Hi, readers. It's Lori. Welcome back to my channel, uh, or welcome if this is your first time. It's Throwback Thursday. Okay. I discovered something while I was preparing for this Throwback Thursday. The other day, I was looking for a particular book actually the night circus because someone was reading it i think and i thought i have that and i never read that where is that book so i looked through my stacks that i have in a variety of rooms including my unread stacks and i couldn't find it anywhere so i said to my partner i think i still have some books in the shed we need to go look in the shed well, you might as well say we need to go expose ourselves to everyone with coronavirus or leprosy because neither of us want to go to the shed. It's just not in the best organizational shape because when we moved, we did put some boxes in there and we uh, it's just a long story that you don't need to know. Nevertheless, today, as I was preparing for this, I realized that I am certain that I have books in the shed because there are two books here today that I'm going to talk about with you that I can't find anywhere. And that drives me nuts. So not only is The Night Circus missing, the first two novels in this series that I have read by this author that I'm presenting to you today are also missing. So send good thoughts that I can find my missing book babies. And then let's talk about <laughs> why we're here today, which is the author Greg Isles. Craig Isles is from Mississippi, and I've had the pleasure of meeting him and had the pleasure of listening to him do a book talk. I even have a photo with him. So, uh, but I do like his books. I like them a lot. The only challenges I have with Greg Isles' books is that they are all just humongous. So <laughs> we're going to get through this video, but will I ever get through all of these books? I don't know. He's very prolific very prolific, lovely guy, really is as genuine as you can imagine uh, an author could be. He has some interesting plot development and, and really develops his characters fully, writes thoroughly. They're compelling. So it's not like once you get started, you can't get through them, but they are chunkers for sure. So I have these in a variety of uh, ways, <laughs> you know, the missing ones, but also the ones that I have. So I'll explain how that happened. Does it bother me? I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay. Let's start. You're probably thinking, what is she talking about? So I read the first one in the pen cage series six years ago, and it's called the quiet game. And I really enjoyed it. I gave it five stars. I think it, they also really excite me because they're set in a community that I've been in multiple times. I used to have to travel there for one of my program visits, and I went at least yearly, if not more often. And then I went for AARP now and again as well. Natchez is an historical community. It has a lot of richness and beauty, and it's it has a lot of dichotomy, and it's just, it's just a, a, a southern city that you should probably visit sometime if you have the chance. It also has some casino properties, which a lot of our cities do. So it's it's a great place to to spend a couple of days. The Quiet Game, which is book one, as I said in this series, is about Penn Cage and his daughter who are recovering from losing his wife, mom. And they move from Houston back to Natchez because he really feels as though she needs some family around her as they grieve this loss. And he does too. So he returns only to find out that his father, who's an attorney in Natchez, is being blackmailed. And he's really upset about this. And obviously he's going to do whatever he can to see if he can solve this case that is happening around them. I flew through this, as I remember, it was really, really easy to read. Turning Angel is book number two, and I read this one in five days. I read it in 2021, and it is about a young girl, teenager, who's found murdered by the Mississippi River, and Penn's friend Drew is being looked at as a suspect in this murder, and Penn will do anything that he can do to exonerate his friend, including investigating this, 
very deeply and finding out a lot of secrets exist in the lives of these teenagers that are attending this school. So I love that one too. It does have some sensitivity warnings for some sexual assault or predator behaviors. The reason this one is called Turning Angel is because there is a statue in Natchez that is called Turning Angel. And so if you ever visit Natchez, you should go and look at that as well. well I do have book three, Pen Cage <laughs> uh, goes on to be elected as mayor. Uh, that is a bit of a spoiler, I guess, but I don't think it matters any uh, in any way. This one involves some gambling, which is rampant in Natchez and some other things. And you can see by the dice on the cover that that's kind of foreshadowing for you. And there's a little skull. This one I got used at a bookstore, obviously. And so it's in, it's in good shape, good enough shape though, for sure. So that would be next for me in this series. Book four is Natchez Burning, which a friend of mine gave me a copy of after she had read it and decided she wasn't going to keep it. You can again see how big these are. <laughs> Deckled edges. This one I had signed by the author when I went to the library. This one is again about him uh, supporting his father who's accused of murdering someone. So his dad really gets in a lot of tight places, doesn't he? And then book five is the bone tree. So you're noticing a trend here. Some of these I have in hardback. Some of these I don't. Did he sign this one too? He did. Darkest maelstrom of his life. His family is fractured. And I don't want to tell you any more than that because it's a spoiler. Book six is Mississippi Blood. I'm not even going to read the synopsis on the flat because obviously I just did that a minute ago and I wish I hadn't. So there you go. <laughs> this one continues on this series, book six and book seven, which is called Southern Man comes out May 28th. So that will, spoiler alert, be one of my anticipated releases, but you can see I obviously have some work to do on these series and I'm going to definitely say to you that I'm going to get to that this year, but Will I get to that this year? I don't know. <laughs> Here's some others that I have that are standalones or this, there's two of them I think are actually connected in a series, but this is a standalone. This is Cemetery Road. This came out in hardcover in 2020. So I've had this for a little while. I, you know, definitely have been collecting these, right? This is about Marshall McEwen, who's a successful journalist in DC. You know, I love a book set in Washington, DC. But he discovers his father's terminally ill and he must go back to his childhood home, a place he vowed he would never return to. And that is Bienville, Mississippi, which, to be quite honest, I've lived here for many years, but I don't think Bienville, Mississippi is a real town. But I could be wrong. He discovers a lot of things have changed since he's been there. And I, I, I thought this would be good. I love this cover. Can you see it? I love it. I absolutely love it. So that's a standalone. This one is 640, 638 pages. I should have told you the page count on the others, but I don't want to know. doesn't matter. Books are good no matter how many pages they have. I'm telling myself that because I'm in the middle of reading a really big book. And then this is where I get confused. So this one, Black Cross, I bought as well. I actually bought this at the World War II Museum when I was visiting there because it was featured. They have a lot of books about World War II that are featured in their museum gift shop, and I love to support them. January 1944, Allied troops preparing for D-Day. Uh, Nazi scientists develop a new toxic nerve gas that will repel and wipe out any invasion force. Two vastly different but equally determined men are sent to infiltrate the secret concentration camp where the poison gas is being perfected on, you guessed it, human subjects. Their only objective is to destroy all traces of the gas and the men who created it, no matter how many lives may be lost, including their own. Got good reviews. I think my son said he wanted to read this one too. So this is his first World War II novel that I know of, but then this is his second, and it is being billed as book two in the World War II series. 
this one says the Spandau Diary, what was in it? Why did secret intelligence agencies of every power want it? Why was a brave and beautiful woman kidnapped and sexually tormented to get it? Why did a chain of deception and violent death lash out across the globe from survivors of the Nazi past to warriors in a new conflict now about to explode? Why did the world's entire history of World War II have to be rewritten as the future hung over a nightmare abyss? I think this is based on a true story, too. It is like they took every inch <laughs> of this margin that they could. And it is also 694 pages. So you can see that Greg Isles may be my like tour de force in retirement. <laughs> but I may decide to get to one or two a year. That would be a good goal for me, right? What do you think? How do you think I should approach this? But this is my throwback Thursday in which there are only two books by this author that I have completed. That won't surprise you. But there is a big, big list of things that he has published. And this is only a sampling of that. Uh, so let me know if you've read Greg Isles. Some of my subscribers are readers of Greg Isles. I know because I see them marking it to read. And, and we talk about that every now and again. But I would just love to hear if this is an author you've heard of. If this is a new author to you today, let me know if you think this is something you would read. And as always, happy reading. Bye. Mm -hmm.